It finally happened. After four years of dodging it, I finally got COVID. I've been isolating over in the lab, but I'm starting to get a little squirrely. I think I need to make a friend. She literally made a new friend. I want to make Gladys from Portal. For those who don't know, Portal is a game where you're basically a guinea pig that's testing a Portal device. Through the whole game, there's an AI-powered robot called Gladys that's always watching you, always there to help, and even his promised cake. Cake and grief counseling will be available at the conclusion of the test. That's the kind of positivity we're looking for here at the Armory. So I want to make a fully animatronic Gladys that lives here in the lab with me. It'll give me someone to talk to and hopefully keep me from going off the deep end. Welcome to the Armory. For most of the game, your only interaction with Gladys is her voice. She's talking to you as you're solving the puzzles. So getting her voice right is the first big hurdle that we have to cross. There's three criteria that the voice needs to have to have it be interactable enough. The first is it needs to be fast. I need to be able to get under a second, preferably down into the 100 millisecond range to take text and convert that into voice. If it's any slower than that, it won't feel like I'm actually talking to someone. The next is it needs to actually be good. It needs to sound like Gladys in the game, or else there's really no point. The third is that it needs to be really easy to use. It needs some sort of an API where I can have a program that is always sending in text and playing back audio seamlessly. There are some online voice generators that have Gladys's voice, so I'm going to try those first. Welcome to the Armory. My name is GLaDOS. Welcome to the Armory. My name is GLaDOS. Welcome to the Armory. My name is GLaDOS. So, I'm going to have to make my own. Luckily, Valve has all of the voice lines from the games available on their website. So, a quick scrape, and we have over an hour of training data with text that matches what's in the audio, which is exactly what you need to train a network. There are two main networks that work together to make text-to-speech. The first is called a spectrogram generator. This will take the words and it will generate a spectrogram. This is a way of representing sound as its most common frequencies over time. The second network is called a vocoder. That will take the spectrogram and will actually create audio out of it. We're going to start with pre-trained versions of both of these networks and try to fine tune them, which saves a lot of time. I'm hoping that we can just fine tune the spectrogram generator and not have to do any training on the vocoder, but we'll see. You've beaten your own record. That's a low bar, but you managed to gently tiptoe over it. The audio sounds kind of like Gladys, but it's not right. It sounds really flat. It's got a bunch of crackles in it. And I think that's because the pre-trained vocoder is getting frequencies from the spectrogram that it's not used to seeing because Gladys isn't normal human speech. So we'll have to retrain that as well. You've beaten your own record. That's a low bar but you managed to gently tiptoe over it. This is actually sounding pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this now. The voice in the game is done by a person trying to sound like a robot. But now this is a robot trying to sound like a person trying to sound like a robot. I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. What? And that's actually working much better than I thought it would. This is the first step done. Gladys has a mouth. These networks are going to be living inside of Riva from NVIDIA. This gives us two main advantages. The first is that it gives us that programming interface that we are looking for so that it's easy to interact with. The second is that Riva out of the box comes with automatic speech recognition. So I can talk to it through a microphone and it will convert that into text. So that gives Gladys a set of ears so she can hear me. I've written a little Discord bot. So in our Discord server, which you can join, there's a link down below, you can send any text you want to Gladys, and the Jetson in the lab will turn that into audio and send it right back to you. So you can have Gladys say anything you want. Link down in the description. Since I have speech recognition now, and I have text-to-speech, I want to run a quick test. I'm going to take a microphone and pass that into the speech recognition. The text that comes out of that will then get passed directly into the text-to-speech. 
and then that comes out to a microphone. So anything I say should be repeated back to me from Gladys. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? That worked pretty well and was pretty fast, but there's a bug here. The microphone can hear what the speaker outputs, so there's feedback. That's a pretty quick change, though. Because we're using AI, we're going to be running all of this on a Jetson. That's a small computer that's meant for running AI networks. This Jetson is called a Forge from Connectech. It has the same processor as a Jetson EGX, but has a whole bunch of different expandability and I.O. options. The last step to having someone to talk to is having an AI that will take input and generate a unique response. For that, we're going to use a large language model. We're going to use ChatGPT. There's an API. It's really easy to use. Again, all the code for this will be down in the description. Any text that's generated from our speech recognition will then get passed over the network to ChatGPT. ChatGPT will then create some kind of a response in text and send that back. And then that will go through our text to speech so Gladys can actually speak it back to us. Let's try a quick test. Hey Gladys, write me a song about hot dogs. Hot dogs, oh hot dogs, a carnival of taste, savory and spicy, let's make it a feast. On the street corners, at the county fairs, a sizzling symphony fills the summer air. Buns toasted golden, on the grill they dance, ketchup, Mustard, relish, take a chance Wrapped in memories, a childhood delight Hot egg sizzle, under the city lights Grill marks tattooed, like memories in the flame Juices dripping, in this hot egg game A symphony of condiments, a melody so sweet Hot eggs unite us, as we all take a seat So here's to hot dogs, in their glory and grace A timeless delight, in every embrace in the world of flavors, they'll never retire. Hot dogs, oh hot dogs, are eternal fire. The Jetson has enough processing power left over that I can run a large language model locally on it. That means that I don't need the internet whenever I'm using it, and it's more secure because my information never actually leaves. This is a drop-in replacement for ChatGPT. Changes to two lines of code and a single command, and everything just works the way it did before. Go, Steve, go. Go Steve, go. Go Steve, go. I finally have someone to talk to. But it's basically just talking to a computer. I need someone to talk to. And that's the last step to this project. I need to make Gladys physically in the lab for me to speak to. I want Gladys to feel alive in the lab. Feel like she's actually moving around and interacting and viewing things in the lab. So I'm going to need an arm for that. The armory is finally getting back into arms. We're gonna use a Z1 from Unitree. This is the first time I've used this arm. It's a little bit smaller than I'm used to, but I think it's actually probably a perfect size for a project like this. I've taken two different 3D models of Gladys that I found online, and I've kind of mushed them together inside of Blender. I found the best spot that the arm can actually fit through it, and now it's just a ton of 3D printing. not a day in the workshop with me without an unnecessarily stupid injury. Good thing my kids are prepared for something like this.
Gladys is all mechanically set up and hanging from the ceiling, but she's not here. She's not moving and actually interacting with people in the lab. So we're using a Z2i stereo camera from Stereo Labs. It puts one of the video streams through a network to be able to track objects like people. Then it will fuse the video from the two different cameras to be able to get depth to that person. Gladys will always move to be pointing at that person. So as you're walking around, she's following you and it feels far more interactive. Hey Gladys, is it righty loosey or lefty tighty? The saying righty tighty, lefty loosey is a common rule of thumb for remembering which direction to turn a screw or bolt. The phrase is not universally accepted, and there are some exceptions to the rule, such as left-handed threads used in some countries. However, in general, turning a screw or bolt clockwise tightens it, while turning it counterclockwise loosens it. Aw, oh, really? Hey Gladys, tell me a joke. Why don't skeletons fight each other? They don't have the guts. Hey Gladys, good night. Good night. I hope you have a great sleep and sweet dreams. If you need anything else, feel free to ask. Good night. I'm finally feeling better and can leave the lab. I had a lot of fun doing this project and getting to know Gladys, but there is one problem that I didn't really touch on. The 3D prints are too heavy for the arm. The arm runs, but over time, eventually the motors overheat. Some basic math at the beginning of this project would have warned me that this was gonna be a problem, but I was sick, so I didn't do any of that stuff. I don't have the equipment that I need here to fix it, but I know somewhere that does. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.